The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Beulah Gal, can you believe this? We are now the patrol queens of the neighborhood. We now large and in charge. So we need to check out what's going on in everybody's yard. What about that gun that we know that Junior and his homeboys just ran out? Can we report that too? Of course we can. But we could be in deep trouble if they find out. We need to report what we see, Beulah. When you call Crime Stoppers, they just answer your call in Miami. So then we can report everything? Guns? Where they hiding the drugs? Who shoot who? Who part of which gang? Or who disturbing the peace with the loud music? music in the motorcycles. Then our neighborhood will be the best in the Bahamas and everybody gonna want to come live here. And then our house price will go up, gal. So what we waiting on? What's the number? If you see something, say something. Let us all pitch in and stop the crime before it's your time. Call 328-8477 from Nassau or 242-300-8477 from the Family Islands. Or text us through the Crack Crime Bahamas app. Stop the crime before it's your time. Welcome to Guardian Radio AM. Today is Tuesday, Tuesday, August 1st, and it's a little after 11 o'clock in the morning. Once again, this is C.A. Nuri, and I shall be your host for the day as we celebrate Emancipation Day. Ah, yes, today, August 1st, is Emancipation Day. It's been several hundred years since the enslaved Africans uh, who were captured and transported across the big Atlantic Ocean and brought to this new world this new concept and was forced to do labor, uh, capitalism for a particular type of people. But now those descendants are free. And it happens that a community in the Bahamas, a community in Foxhill in particular, tends to commemorate um, the emancipation of their ancestors. In fact, Besides celebrating the emancipation of the ancestors, which is August 1st, and they celebrate that every year, the Fox Hill community has a, a committee, uh, a committee that's called the Fox Hill, let me try to get the right name, Fox Hill Festival Committee, that's the right, right word for it. Uh, they have a committee that organized Fox Hill Day, which is separate and apart from the Emancipation Day celebration. And I'm here, I have them here on, on the radio today to explain all of the festivities, all of the celebration. What is this Fox Hill uh, Festival Committee about? And we have the chairman of the Fox Hill Festival Committee, Warren Davis, and he brought uh, some person with him also. But I want to formally introduce Warren Davis, who is the chairman of this Fox Hill uh, Committee. And I want, to exp- I want him to explain what is this committee, first of all how long this committee being established, and what is the objective of the committee, and how does it tie into Emancipation Day? Well, good morning. Good morning, Bahamas. Good morning, Siri. Thank you for having us on the radio this morning. Do you want to... Yes, you said the committee. The committee now is been established now for 35 years. Um, the eight Eric Wilmot Sr. saw, saw it fitting to bring these two events, Emancipation Day and Fox Hill Day together, to have the activities organized. And now the committee has been, like I said, 35 years in existence as a committee. So our portfolio is to organize all the events around Emancipation Day. But it's so interesting this year that we took it a little further. So we're trying to organize something throughout. The, we have a whole year of a calendar of events. So you've been doing this for the entire year celebration? We have started from June of this year, June 24th, we have done an um, entrepreneurial program. We have done a um, job fair. Uh, we started the basketball, have a basketball tournament that's ongoing in Fox Hill. So, you know, we're getting things together. And the festival committee seems to be very community-oriented, that you bring people together to celebrate themselves, first of all, and to empower behemoths. It doesn't seem as if just as Fox Hill Day. It seems as if you try to do things bigger and better to engage the people 
in the community? Yes, you know, we try to um, to engage the whole wide aspect of the of the, of the provenance. You know, we invite anybody those who could come down and have a, a stall at this particular time, which is on Fox Hill Day, even Emancipation Day. Uh, and this year is unique because it falls back to back. You know, the seven and the eight Emancipation Day falling on the the seventh and Fox Hill Day is on the eighth. Mm -hmm. Every five years this happens, and so you know we have our work cut out. And we look forward for those to come out and celebrate. Um, so we do plan all the events leading up to the Foxville. Okay, let's talk about your reign. You're the chairman of the Foxville uh, Festival Committee, right? How long have you been the chairman of the Foxville Committee? Well, we had elections in October. Okay. So this is my first year at the chair. So um, every three years we have election. So if it's, they see it fitting for the next three years, then we go on to that. But, you know, we, in this, I'm hoping that to, you know, bring someone else up to take that, that spot. You know, you don't want to sit at that chair and, you know, yeah. these young people have all awesome opportunity. Yes. So you'll be the chair for the next three years? For the next three years. This year, the next two years in terms of development and pushing forward the agenda of the Fox Committee? Yes, sir. And who is all, who all are on your executive board? Well, we have... Um, me, the chair, Larry Wilmot is our deputy chair. We have a secretary, Philip Burroughs. Uh, assistant chair is Stephanie Davis. Uh, our chaplain is Kim Kimberly Ferguson. Our assistant chaplain is Charisma. Is Charisma. And Smith. And um, treasurer is Sophia Moss. And our assistant treasurer, Charlene Curry. Nice. So let's talk about the Foxville Festival itself and then the Emancipation Festival, right? Last week, at least it's been at least for two weeks now, you've had activities based on Foxville Day and Emancipation Day. Um, and just on remember day, Sunday, you had a big concert in the middle of the, in the, middle of the park. Yeah. I mean, I never seen so much crowd <laughs> people there. Yes. You had the singing prophet dancing like crazy, <laughs> right? Awesome. The people that was praising God. I mean, your, your host was awesome, right? And I see this Fox Hill community and the extended community came out to witness it. So you have activities where you where people come out to see, right? And I want to know so far, what all have you put on so far? And let's go on what all can I expect? Well, so far, like I said earlier, we have put on the small business program, and then that was in June, and then we put on the uh, health fair, and we had a corporate day. Also, our opening ceremony is on Friday pass. Okay, the opening ceremony was Friday pass. Friday pass. So let's talk about this opening ceremony. What happened? Well, we had um, in attendance the Minister of, of, of uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Public Works, our MP, Mr. F uh, Honorable Fred Mitchell. Mm -hmm. And then in attendance was the Chinese ambassador mm -hmm. and other government officials and other clergies, all the clergies of Fox Hill was there. And I know, because I live Fox Hill, by the way, um, the Chinese ambas uh, embassy tend to participate often. I remember one time they brought a contingent down to participate. I'm not sure if you were around during that time, but yes, I, I remember that vividly. Yes. And um, how is that? Do you welcome other ethnic groups, for lack of better words, other uh, persons outside of Fox that come and participate, say, hey, I want to celebrate with you all, but I, I'm from a different historical background. Can I come and, and celebrate with you all, bringing my, 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 my history with, with me? I know uh, earlier when uh, Ms. Gardner introduced her title, it sort of threw you off. Mm -hmm. And that's something we're trying to really engage in. And she says an international coordinator. So we really try to get those persons in and around different backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds, to get involved, you understand? Because, hey, we all live in this country together, so let's be able to celebrate together. So this way I can bring in Miss Gardner now. This is Miss, let me give a great name, Georgette Gardner. She is the International Tourism Event Coordinator for Fox Hill Community. And I said, they have an International Tourism Coordinator? I don't know exactly what you mean. What you just do? What you, what you just do? So can I get to the mic closer there, Miss Gardner. Um, what you do for Fox Hill Committee? First of all, I want to say good morning, Bahamas, and good morning to all the Fox Hillians that's tuning in and listening. Mr. Nuri, it's a pleasure having us here on your radio show. Um, my job seems to be an easy one, but it's a heavy task. Because I thought you were working for tourism, so, but you said, no, you, you dedicated to Fox Hill. No. <laughs> well, my dream, along with the chairman, I would say our dream, but I'm really a tourism baby. I'm a product of tourism. Um, for my parents go down. 
Um, I want to see the festival as a brand and not just a regular annual festival. So when I say a brand, I want it to be where we would en encourage vendors to just not focus on the peas and rice, the macaroni and the chicken. Yes, a but food I, festival. Go right. Ahead. But I want to turn it into to now an international festival where you can bring those from the straw market, those who might be at home making um, dishes out of maybe gombe can sodas. I'm just throwing ideas out I there. Understand. You can make jewelry from the tamarind seeds. So you're bringing craft into yes. it. Yes. So I want to do a mixture of everything. But in order to do that, you have to bring the tourists into Fox Hill in order to see it. So you want tourists come to Fox Hill to experience it? Yes. So I how's that coming along then? Well, so far I've been in conversation with tourism. I must say that Miss Latia Duncan is very helpful and resourceful, along with Miss Karen Seymour at the tourism office in Grand Bahama. Um, next year, they will be able to be on the ground physical, helping us, but through email, they're giving us idea and they're walking us through what to do. Um, I've also been in conversation with Atlantis, Bahama, Sandals, even down to Royal Caribbean. Royal Caribbean is actually ready. I can imagine. Royal Caribbean always ready. <laughs> yes, they're ready. Um, they even gave me an idea of why don't we do uh, storytelling. So what they want us to do is to turn the community center, a portion of the community center, into a cultural, not just for the festival itself, but an everyday cultural avenue, meaning that someone will be there to tell the story of Fox Hill. Someone will be able to show the olden days, um, the goose, all that stuff that we use. So museum type thing. Yes. Where, where, where there's storytelling also. Yes. So will that be happening this year? No, not this year, mm -hmm. but it's in the pipeline. Yes. That starting early next year, it will take place. Nice. Yes. I, li I like that. I'm, I'm actually excited about that because Foxo has uh, a number of, well, for lack of a better word, artifacts and buildings that is old. Yeah. Like right by the wrong about this one, one building that is carved out of stone. Well, that and I'm trying there, to say, hey, how come we don't have this on the tour? That's in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. You know, one year, um, Dr. Jacinta Hicks, her along with a few persons out of Fox Hill, a special lady named um, Ms. Sybil Allen, she is the go-to person for any artifacts, any type of cultural ideas. They did have that building as a museum at one point during a festival. Mm -hmm. And so, like you say, you always want to know how come, but that's in the pipeline as well. So bigger and better things are in, and should be anticipated for the immediate future. Yes. I'm thinking this year is just, a, I would want to say, a trial and error, mm -hmm. but we're working as we go. So let's talk to Roger Williams, who is here too, right? Uh, you're the organizer for Trek New Providence. What is this Trek New Providence thing you're talking about? Good morning, Bahamas. Good morning, Mr. Neri. Thank you for having us here, and thank you for having <clears throat> me here in particular. Uh, Trek Across New Providence is a road race. Um, road race? It's a road race. Um, what happened was all my life, Mr. Neri, I was under the belief that it took seven days to get from Gambin to Fox Hill. Man, see, that leads me into my story. I heard Fox will get the news late with how big Nassau is. But I can come back to Mr. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Davis about that. So surely it takes all day to get from Fox to the Gambia. Listen, this race basically is designed to, to show the two communities that they have a bond, Fox Hill and Gambia. So I came up with the idea that there is nothing during that period that actually bond these two communities. So I had the idea to do a night run that starts in Gambia and moves into Fox Hill. The idea is to get all of the participants in this event into Fox Hill just in time to celebrate Junkanoo. To debunk the, mis the, 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 the mystery or the myth that Nassau is so big, it takes seven days to go from one end to the other. Um, it takes approximately three, three plus hour for the slowest walker to get to Fox Hill. My event is called Trek Across New Providence because it is designed to go across New Providence. It does not go along Bay Street because then it would be Trek Across Nassau. Mm -hmm. We want it to go through New Providence. So, let me see, I'm excited about it. Only because of the narrative and you say the connection between 
uh, what I call former slave uh, villages, Fox Hill, you call Gambia, right? And uh, the connectivity. And once upon a time, Fox Hill had what I call narrow roads where people, the horse and buggies, go throughout the Bahamas. And you're just talking about you're, going to, you're trying to organize a race where connecting one village to the next village is like communicating with the, with the goat skin drum again and, and sending, sending the inf- information. But is this, do you plan to do this for this year? Can, do, we'll have the time to do this? This event, this would be the third running of this event. You mean you've been doing it for three years? Yes. Uh, the first one was done in 2019 and then uh, 2020, and then we took a break uh, because of the pandemic. Yeah, the COVID. Uh, we, uh, yeah, we took a two-year break, and then I was approached by uh, Warren and the committee to do it again. Um, so it happens. It's been happening, and um, we're excited about it. Um, runners are excited Maybe about backtrack it. backtrack now and tell me how to register, who needs to register, and, 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 and stuff like that. Because I, honestly, I love Fox, but I didn't, I didn't know about this race. That, that's no problem, my friend. Registration is very simple. You can pick up a registration form um, at the Fox Hill Community Center, or you can come out to the um, Fox Hill Park on Saturday at 3 o'clock. We'll be there registering persons. Uh, the race actually is a Sunday afternoon, um, 6 August, beginning at 8 p.m. Gambia. 8 p.m. at night at, at Gambia. At night. This is a night run. It's cool. You have no excuse to say you're running hot or anything. It's at night. And it goes from Gambia along Bay Street onto Blake Road, JFK Drive, Tonic Darling Highway, East West Highway, across Marathon Road, onto Wolf Road, straight into the Fox Hill Parade. Man, that's a celebration. And you need to bring goatskin drums and, and car bells then, because this is a run, right? It's a, it's a celebration of we self, uh, of the, the journey that we took to emancipation. So you're going from one freedom spot to a next freedom spot. The narrative needs to be told. But I'm excited. I mean, I, I right. So that's why I say all these words. Forgive me. Go ahead. <laughs> well, Brother Nuri, the whole idea is so that persons would, would realize that the narrative needs to be told and become aware of it. That's the purpose of this run. So that persons who that knows the narrative will tell the narrative. We, we, we're also offering a cash prize. You have money too. We have a little bit of money. Ain't much money. What do you mean ain't much money? Ain't much money. I need to talk to my MP. Uh, <laughs> man, I, I would enjoy that. The first male finisher mm-hmm. gets $250. Yeah, can I buy that? some good money. The first female finisher gets $250. And we're giving away lots of prizes. See, I can't run fast, but I plan to participate. You could walk. You could walk. And I want to know what I can get free whilst I walk in, because I hear the 250. I can get that. <laughs> so I, I, I assume there'll be other prizes that I, I might could win. Like the, met, the best dress person out there. What we, what we did this year, we were going to have a raffle, but we realized that there are some persons that run, walk, that are going to participate, that needs to be encouraged. Yes. So we have some prizes where we have spotters that are going to, at the end of the ceremony, at the end of the race, they're going to give some prizes. See, I, that's why I interested that. That because you know I can't run fast. And and we're gonna just so that you can show off, we are giving every participant a finishes medal. I like that. And a shirt, dry fit shirt. Oh, so let's talk about the shirt and the registration. Is there a registration fee? There is forty five dollars registration. Forty five in registration fee. And what all do I get when I pay my forty five dollars to run? You get your shirt. Mm-hmm. A dry fit shirt. Mm-hmm. You get a swag bag. In that bag is a waterproof holder for your phone. Mm-hmm. You get a towel. You get a, uh, it's like a foil cloth that you'll put over. You know, you run and you get a little cold. You get, you, get, you get one of those. Um, you become eligible for those prizes that, that we, we were telling you about. Mm-hmm. And, um, so you get things. You get things. You man. get things. Yeah, you get some and, things. And, and the track clubs, uh, I assume you already reached out to them and said, man, come. Listen, they're calling me every day. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to do this run. Because, you know, what happens is runners always wants to PR. Yes. Sometimes it's hard to PR in the hot sun. The best time to do it is in the cool of the evening. I like this. I mean, I like it more because I, I, as a lay historian and a culturalist, right, I like narratives that 
define us as a people. And having the Fox Hill community of Freedom Town or, or former slaves or former enslaved people forming a, 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 a village and having the village of Gambia reconnect, a reconnection of, of, of African villages, that is a narrative that needs to be told, especially during Emancipation Day. And having a run that does that, that do that reconnection, I, I believe that a, 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 an independent narrative needs to be go along with your run. But no, I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm yeah, excited about that. There, there, are th- there are two more things that, that, that's important to understand. Running in the afternoon, the cool of the evening on that route, there is a feeling that comes over you. Mm-hmm. You feel the ancestors running along. I can imagine. It's cool and it's almost like they're helping you. The second thing is next year we're going to add a another component. We're going to add the torch run. Nice. We're going to have a torch that's going to go from Gambia into Fox Hill. And hopefully we can have persons from those two villages passing the torch from one village to the next village. Can you imagine that? I, I, I already envision it. And as you run, I know, and, and, and persons who, who are listening could, could, could call in and give me the correct name. There is a name for, an African name for Black Village. And we are apparently be running past that. And I remember once upon a time, persons from Fox Hill used to travel to Black Village and have a drumming section a drumming section and have the best goatskin drummers, a tribute to the ancestors for Emancipation Day. And I'm hoping that the Fox Hill Committee invite people from Black Village, Kuda Ketabuna, I mean, the name just gone, and person from Gambia and a person from Adelaide to come and then rejoin us in Fox Hill in terms of celebrating our emancipation. But let's talk about what all to expect for Fox Hill Day. But before that, why or what is Fox Hill Day? Right, because I know inside Emancipation Day, that's the day when we got uh, the Africans got set free. Mm-hmm. But Fox Hill Day is separate, and usually Fox Hill Day is a week after. And you saying that every five years it comes to like the moons and the stars converge, and it comes one day after each other instead of being seven days after. Yes. So this year, five years later, Fox Hill Day is going to be one day after it Emancipation Day holiday, right? And what all can the wider New Providence expect to experience in Fox Hill and during Fox Hill Day. And, but I want to, first, what is Fox Hill Day? Well, um, Fox Hill Day, you know, we are celebrating Fox Hill Day now since 1870, and it involves because of the churches. You know, the myth that they said that it took seven, seven, days, seven days to get to Fox Hill, you know. Uh, uh, you mean that's not a myth? <laughs> I hear Fox of people just walk slow. That's why I said this running is important. And that they hear about emancipation, right? And it took us whole seven days to tell the people in Fox that we was free. And they were still working and slaving. And so what you mean we free? They said, man, they Nassau, they say we free and we free. So that ain't happen? What happened? No, uh, what happened, uh, my understanding is that the churches in Fox Hill, especially the Baptist churches, they got together and they wanted just to say, celebrate and to be thankful at this time. So that's... That's how it became Fox Hill Day. So Fox Hill Day is when our, our peop- the people of Fox Hill get together. Uh, all the churches, uh, especially the Baptist churches, they get together with a church service at that morning. And throughout the day, you have different activities. Uh, Fox Hill has, like I said, been down now for 30, from 1870. Now we are celebrating 35 years as a committee. Mm-hmm. And this year we are putting on, you know, they have the greasy pole. Yes. The May pole. Mm-hmm. Um, this year we do a little bit of crab catching. Oh, okay. Yeah. Some pineapple eating. Nice. Yeah, so we have the, the still walkers even in Fox Hill this year walking around to show, you know. And then there's always lots of food, lots of fun. You have entertainers, you have the DJ, you have um, uh, Nishi, uh, Rashad, and those who are, will be performing so we have a full day of fun, you know. Just come on down, enjoy yourself. Now, when I used to live off of East Street, right, before I uh, matriculated to Fox Hill, I thought Fox Hill Day was a night thing. And when I come, move to Fox Hill now, right, uh, I live in uh, uh, what Foxdale now, right? When I moved there, Fox is a day thing. It's a day and night thing. It starts early in the morning, and you all have activities and things to do. And then there's a night thing. I did not know. I'm not sure people of East Street understand that Fox Hill Day is an all-day thing. So you need to tell me, uh, 
what time in the morning do I need to show up on Fox Hill? And what time of night do I get? Because I know John can win thing. Well, this year, mm -hmm. <laughs> when you see it kick off on Sunday. That's it. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> what do you mean by kick off on Sunday? Sunday is the day before the event. All right. We have a church march will be going on on Sunday. It starts at 3. So see, you can pause you there. Because I've been in Fox Hill on 20 years. I don't know about no church march. This year, what we try to do is get the church, you know, in the forefront yes. of this, this festival. Yes. You understand? So we uh, engage the church that they will, you know, they do the ecumenical service, which is on Emancipation Morning. Okay. So we ask them to do, you know, the church march and also... The when you say church, is it like a rush? A church no, rush? No, we, don't, we just march through the village. Okay. You know, giving God thanks. Okay. You know, for this time. And like we said, we want to put God first mm -hmm. and everything that we do. So we ask the church to lead that. Mm -hmm. So we start off with that church march. And before that, that Saturday, we engage the youths. So on Saturday the 5th, 3 o'clock, from St. Augustine's, we're engaging all the youths of Fox Hill, and we'll march up to Fox Hill Parade and have a youth rally. Okay. Yes. So on Sunday, like I said, the church march. And then after the church march, we go to Gambia. We do the track across New Providence. Mm -hmm. And we come into uh, Fox... Uh, Russia. Russia. But before the rush out, mm -hmm. this year, the, the Fox Hill Festival Committee has honored 50 persons out of Fox Hill. Okay. All right. So at that night, we'll honor those persons from Junkanoo. And after which, the Junkanoo rush out, we have six groups, the Wally, the Saxons, um, the Wally, the Saxon, Roots, and one family. And in the B category, you have Redland Soldiers and the original Congos. The Congos. Yes. Mm -hmm. So after which, then we go into the ecumenical service, which is start at 11, right on the parade. And after which, we have a luncheon right at the community center. And we go into that day of all day fun. Mm -hmm. And back the next day is Fox Hill Day. And every day, you know, people will be out there. Why we start There's early? two days of events, man. man three Body days. Three days of events. Three days. Yeah. I could be tired. <laughs> go ahead. Well, like, you know... We all will be tired. Yeah, I can see that, man. There's so much things to do. <laughs> but it's good, you know. It's good to have fun and to bring people. You know, people come from, people who travel, who live in the States, they come down at this time. Yes. And people from who, who move out of Fox Hill, they come around. And we get together and we knit and we bond. We talk old stuff. We, you know, this is the time when you want to see somebody. This is the time to come out and, you know, reconnect. Uh, you talk about the churches earlier, right? Um, I attend St. Sin, um St. Anne's, which is on top of the hill, the Anakin Church, right? They have records about um, slaves uh, being freed and they, uh, what's it called, protecting them inside the church itself, mm. right? And I was saying, I was encouraging people at St. Anne's, I said, man, you need to have an open talk about how St. Anne's um, uh, em help emancipate uh, enslaved persons, right? And have the records and the names and, and, and see the descendants of these things. And I know that Fox has about, what, six, seven, eight churches? How many churches in that area? Honestly, 22. 22 yeah. churches? Yes. Yeah. In that Fox Hill area, yes. all have a narrative of how the church has propelled and uplifted a community, right? So I'm, I'm expecting them to each have a narrative mm -hmm. and a celebratory uh, session of a Fox Hill Day. And I'm glad that you have included them inside this march throughout the, the village. But um, I'm, so much things that they can do. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about this, man. Yes. Yeah, but um, I'm going back to you, Miss um, Gardner. With your your tourism aspect, right? I know Mr. Davis mentioned the 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 maypole platen. Uh, he mentioned the greasy pole, and I know it's a cash prize for that. And there's a number of persons who are eager to do that. How important is culture for the fest, the Foxes Festival, and of course the Emancipation Day? The culture is very important. Um, what we do is we try to. Well, our mandate is not to just use the festival period to keep our culture alive. Um, what we're trying to do now is we're trying to see if we can get those persons, like I said earlier, Miss um, Sybil Allen, Dr. Jacinta Higgs, mm -hmm. um, even down to one of our past uh, chairman, Mr. Maurice Tyne. Mm -hmm. They are full of not just uh, knowledge, but they have a lot of resources in terms of us to keep our cultural culture alive. Mm -hmm. We also try to build a relationship, a closer bond with our home Junkano group 
the original Congos. Mm-hmm. We're also planning to do something with them in terms of not just for the festival, but even you, Mr. Nuri, as a resident of Fox Hill, it should be something set up that on a Friday or Thursday, you might have some guests come in from wherever, Miami, mm-hmm. Chicago. Mm-hmm. The shock should be ready for visitors to see what it is to be a Jankunua, mm-hmm. what it is to pace. Where did the original Congos started? How did they start it? Who started Jankunu and Fox Hill? That's a story there. And uh, Mr. Davis, I know that in various as- segments of Fox Hill, there are signs. Congo Town. Yes. And the Nango Town. Joshua yes. Town. What the next one is? Joshua Town. I, I know where that is. So I got to yes. look for that when I, when I get off, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> who put those things up and why are the, those signs up? What does it mean, these signs? What do you say signs mean? Well, um, I just, uh, the tour with um, Mr. Gandhi talked about earlier, when they did that tour, so they identified all the areas that we talk about now, the, where's Congo Town, where's Nango Town, where's Joshua Town, and the like. So they had a tour before ongoing mm-hmm. where they took the tourists to Fox Hill and they explained and they took them to these areas to explain our culture. So, so that's what the tour for. I, I'm hoping that you yeah. do part of the tour again because I know my child went on one, but I haven't been on a Fox Hill tour proper. Because she stopped talking about some kind of creaking thing. So all of these things I want to see yes. as a local resident say, hey, let me experience these things. So I'm yes, hoping that you do that. there is a tour. Um, mm. We do have um, a blue hole um, that's located off Step Street. Um, I haven't been to it maybe about three years. I haven't seen the blue hole at all. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. So I need to see the blue hole. Yes, whenever you're ready, you can call us. I shall call you to see this blue hole. Um, normally, a part of the tour, they even go to the Black Beds Tower. Mm-hmm. Um, you can enter either from off of Roman Street or you can enter from the Eastern Roadway as well. Um, that was also one of the tours. Also on Step Street, there were a building called, it was a part of a plantation. The structure is still there. Okay. All we need to do is just clear it down in the front to more visibility, but it's there, Mr. Noreen. So, Foxel have culture. Yes. Foxel has history. Mm-hmm. This year, as we discussed, uh, it, in our meetings, we need to document. Mm. We're big on trying to document this so now persons could come up behind and read all of this stuff. Because, you know, it's hard to say, people are leaving us and they're leaving us with all this wealth of knowledge. So now, she mentioned some names, so we would try to engage them so they could put this in writing. So now, when the museum comes about in Fox Hill, mm-hmm. Now you can go into the museum and see all this stuff and you can read yeah. your history instead of having a myth, someone telling you this would happen. Yeah. So now our job is now to really take this to another level, not just about Fox and Day itself mm-hmm. and the Emancipation Day and the celebration, but to bring our people together to make them understand what this is all about. What's the meaning of it? You understand? Sometimes we just go and celebrate. We want to empower our people. We want to educate our people. Mm-hmm through the Fox Hill Festival Committee. I didn't take this on just to party in the street. I want to make sure our people are engaged, empowered, so they'll be able to go there and grasp all the opportunities there out there for them. I see we have a caller here. Let's pass the caller through and I'll get to you right now. Okay. Caller, can you hear me? Pleasant. Good morning, Mr. Nuri. Second time calling in. Go ahead. Mr. Nuri, do you know the name of the Fox Hill gal? <laughs> do tell me the name of the Fox Hill gal. <laughs> The Fox Hill girl is named Esther Mins. Mm-hmm. They used to call her Esther Tech. Her oldest brother was Jack Mins, then Bert Mins, then Sammy Mins, and then her two sisters was Gwendolyn Mins, my mother, and Ruth Mins, the baby sister. They lived on the corner of Camp Road and Shady Street. Ms. Esther Tech was always seen walking a bicycle. She had a bicycle a lady's bicycle with a stand in the front and a, with a basket in the front and a stand in the back. But she was so busy every time she reached Fox Hill from, um, from down to Shirley Street to a man named, they used to call him Mr. Tech, up in Blueberry Hill, that she had some of his friends. She never had a chance to ride a bike because she would always have to stop and talk with people. So she would be seen riding this bike, or walking this bike, 
up Foxville, then she'll go by Mr. Tech. The road now is called um, 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 Frank Edgecombe um, um, Road on the western side, going west from Blue Hill, from Blueberry Hill, where Julian Edgecombe and those live now. Um, west of Julian those was a piece of property and where she had a hut with no floor inside it, with an old lamp and an old bed, and nothing but fruit trees on it, uh, scarlet plums and everything. It was my mother's sister. Now, the thing is, Eric Mintz, God bless the dead, my cousin, left the Bahamas. He used to be an actor up at uh, Montego Beach Hotel. Some Canadians liked his acting, and they took him from the Bahamas when he was 17 years old, took him to Montreal, Canada. Eric Mintz, my cousin, wrote the song, I Want a Foxhill Gal When I Get Married. He gave the song to King Eric. King Eric made it a hit, and it was the song in tribute to his mother, Esther Mins, Esther Tech, the Foxhill Gal, my aunt. I, Have a good day. I appreciate that. I got the name for the, the place in Black Village, the, the African name of Black Village, where persons from Fox Hill and Gambia used to come to or travel to to play the, the drum. It's called the Meeting of the Drums. And I'm, I'm assuming that in the future, Fox Hill will also have a Meeting of the Drums, and we'll invite all of these um, villages where free, uh, free enslaved Africans were. It's called Kunta Bunta. I'm not sure if any uh, behemoths are familiar with that word. Kunta Bunta was the name of Black Village. And I want to know about the African aspects of, of the Fox Hill celebration, of the emancipation celebration, right? Um, I know culturally the majority of persons who live in Fox Hill are of African descent, right? Um, I, I want to know of the narrative, narrative of how Fox Hill was named after Mr. Fox, right? The narrative of... of, of um, Sandalins, because I know they have a uh, Sandalins old house, and Sandalins village is right there, right? And um, how important is the, the the story of the original Fox Hill? Because I think Fox, Mr. Fox, was an African, and he had all of this land, and then he started cutting it out to give sell the land to to the Africans in that neighborhood. But that story too has to be told during Fox Hill Day, during Emancipation Day, that everyone who uh, are descendants of Fox Hill say, this is why I'm proud, this is why I'm connected to that community. But I, I want to say this too. Sunday, there was an old Fox Hill name people were singing. Some group called the Ramin Brothers. Mm. Everybody in Fox Hill named Ramin. <laughs> and I want to know how you get the Ramin Brothers to come and perform in Fox Hill. I know all the streets named Ramin, but I mean, how do you get the Ramin Brothers to come and perform? Well, Mr. Nuri, um, again, with my position again, um, I just thought about, you know, back in the day, the folk songs didn't have music in terms of piano and all that sort of stuff. When we were in the field, our ancestors, they sang picking cotton, just singing from the top of their voice, whether it sound good or bad. And so I said, the group that could really perform a cappella to touch your soul and to touch the people would be no better than the Raman brothers. Mm. And so I was in conversation with Bennett, Raming, the leader, from, I would say, from April. Mm -hmm. I saw them at a gospel concert at San on Sandalins Hospital grounds and listening to them. And I said, you know something? This is the group that needs to be in Fox Hill. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know we have to take a commercial break right, uh, shortly, all right? In about a minute, right? So I just want to make sure I know when Fox Hill Day is and, when, and, and what exactly is happening on Emancipation Day. Which day is Fox Hill Day? Fox Hill Day is on Tuesday. Tuesday. August 8th. Next week, Tuesday, yes, will be sir. Fox Hill Day. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And Emancipation Day is August 7th. Which is Monday. Yes. And what time does Fox Hill Day start the activities? <laughs> 12 noon. Noon. Yes, 12 okay. noon on the festival grounds. But if you want to go to church, you're invited to go to any of the Baptist churches in Fox Hill. All the churches start their service at 11 a.m. So every, every Baptist church in the Fox Hill community, you know, it's up to about 20 churches, like you said, mentioned. Well, out of the 23 churches, we have approximately, I would say, give and take, two Bernard Road. I'll say we have about six Baptist churches. Uh -huh. And so out of the six of them, 
they are the original ones that started the Fox Day celebrations. Mm -hmm. And so be prepared. They have a lot of surprises. They have surprises. They have the original brown paper bikes with all the goodies in it. There's a, see, you need to tell me about all the things. Because I, I, as a driftwood, I as a driftwood, I as a driftwood, and I, I just know what they said. I of St. Mark's Native Baptist Church, Reverend Sabrina Pinder. But I must tell you, there's no better lemonade like St. Paul's lemonade. We're going to talk about that after the break, because I want to know where all the free stuff is, right? But this will be in Guardian Radio in the AM. You're invited to come to church. On this, which days will be the church again? Tuesday. Tuesday morning. Yes. 11 o'clock. Yes. And you go to church and they give you goodies and things. Goodies. Things. Yeah, things. You know, so I can talk about that. But we're going to take a quick break. There's Guardian Radio in the AM, and I'm going to talk about the goodies and the free things that can happen in, in Fox and Next. We'll be right back. Say top in. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Parents, it's that sweet time of year again. The kids are going back to school. So pick up your copy of the Nassau Guardian's Back to School Supplement, because it's the most wonderful time of the year. Put your students in the latest styles at the lowest prices because summer break is almost over and our back to school supplement is filled with brand name back to school supplies at discounted prices, store locations, hours, and contact details. It's the happiest season of all. Advertisers, call the Nassau Guardian today at 302 2300 or call your account executive to get in on the two for one insertion deal. If it's uniforms, shoes, books, Backpacks, calculators, art supplies, laptops, tablets, or whatever is on your back to school supply list, your ad should be in the Nassau Guardian's back to school supply. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Beulah Gal, can you believe this? We are now the patrol queens of the neighborhood. We now large and in charge. So we need to check out what's going on in everybody's yard. What about that gun that we know that Junior and his homeboys just ran out? Can we report that too? Of course. We can. But we could be in deep trouble if they find out. We need to report what we see, Beulah. When you call Crime Stoppers, they just answer your call in Miami. So then we can report everything? Guns? Where they hiding the drugs? Who shoot who? Who part of which gang? Or who disturbing the peace with the loud music and the motorcycles? Then our neighborhood will be the best in the Bahamas. And everybody gonna want to come live here. And then our house price will go up, gal. So what we waiting on? What's the number? If you see something, say something. Let us all pitch in and stop the crime before it's your time. Call 328-8477 from Nassau or 242-300-8477 from the Family Islands. Or text us through the Crack Crime Bahamas app. Stop the crime before it's your time. Always on the go? Miss the show? You can now listen to Guardian Radio talk shows anytime, anywhere on Spotify and YouTube by searching Guardian Radio 96.9 FM or by entering the name of your favorite show. You can also listen by logging on to GuardianTalkRadio.com and clicking on the podcast tab. Guardian Radio, continuing to provide you with fresh news and smart talk anywhere, anytime, all day. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. And welcome back to Garden Rooney AM. I want me a fox a gal when I'm lonely. But I see we have a phone call right here. Let me pass that caller through. And I want to talk about um, what all the festivals, festivities that the churches are going to be having. Because I just realized it's, you could go church hopping and you just get things. And all the prime minister and the dignitaries are going to be down in Fox Hill. You know, so all of this I want to, I want to hear about. But let's go to the caller. Caller, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Go ahead. Yes, sir. I want to say uh, congratulations to Mr. Warren Davis and his team. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're doing a, a, a good thing. I think this would be the best one for a long, long time. Look so. I Right now, I wish I could have left my house and bring that up in Fox Hill <laughs> to be a Fox Hillian. Mm -hmm. And you, I heard uh, the lady was talking about the lemonade at, at St. Paul's. Mm-hmm. But I think St. Paul's also is responsible for doing some raccoon soup. That's what I hear. St. Paul's have <laughs> raccoon sauce every year. Thing, you know, 
<laughs> when you go to Papa said, bring your bowl, I bring in my own bowl. Because I got them bowls be small. Well, so I plan... I think this one could be... Go ahead, so go I ahead. I know this is because of the celebrations. It's two days back to back. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. But I'm going to be up there like from Sunday day. Well, I, I plan tell to baby celebrate. Choose, say, oh, man, I say, tell the band, they run me or the fox, they like me there. I understand. Thank you very much, caller. Thank you very yeah, much, caller. St. Paul is her raccoon house, right? And then, and I'm not sure if they can have it for Fox Hill Day or Emancipation Day, day right? But it's a raccoon soup. But my thing, every new, every new Year's Eve, New Year's Day, they definitely have that. But I understand that each one of the church is have goodie bag. You just need to come and attend church on, on, on that Tuesday morning and you just get a bag of free things. So all the Baptist church gets, just make sure. And this is all a part of the narrative of Fox Hill Day on why it was started that, and what would happen, right? And I'm kind of feel left out that me being driftwood, nobody explained this to me, right? But uh, Mr. Davis, you all have a Facebook page to explain this and take pictures where I can come there and, and be reminded of where all to go on, on, on Tuesday. Yes. Uh, the Fox Hill Festival Committee, our, our Facebook page. Uh, like I said, you could always contact uh, myself. I can give my number out. Yeah, give the number out. 422-5799. Mm -hmm. At any given time, you could just reach out and you could talk. Yeah, that's good. So you said, what do we have our Facebook page again? Fox Hill Festival Committee. I can add that right now. And let's go back to you, Miss um, Gardner. Mm -hmm. Call those churches I need to go church hopping <laughs> to on Tuesday to get the free goodies. Okay, so we're going to start off from Bernard Road. You have Macedonia. Mm -hmm. You have, well, since Macedonia is known as the best Fox Hill Day plays. What do you mean by plays? They turn their church service into a replay or a reenactment of what, Fox Hill is really all about, or what made us to celebrate it, okay. or how did it start it? Nice, I didn't know that. Yes. Okay, they get free stuff there too? Yes, okay, they do get okay. free stuff there as good, well. Good. And then you move on up to St. Paul's, mm -hmm. which is known for their raccoon soup and sauce. I plan to get some and raccoon soup and sauce. And lemonade. And a lemonade. Yes, that's under the um, our Reverend, Reverend Bishop J. Carl Raman. Mm-hmm. And then you want to go through Roma Street, okay, which is um, St. Mark's Native Baptist Church. Yeah, Reverend Sabrina Pinder. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get your brown bag with yep. cookies, uh -huh. apples, uh -huh. and sometimes she put a little tamarind sauce in the bag for you. And Fox is full of tamarind and and and, 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 dilly. and dilly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're gonna go on up to Moncari. Moncari too. Moncari Baptist Church is on top of the hill, um, opposite Step Street, the famous Step Street. Yeah. And they also do lemonade. Nice. Yes, and they also I try to see how I can go to church hop into all these things to get my goodie bags. But I will tell you what I have done in the past. I would just go, I would spend at least about 10 to 15 minutes mm -hmm. to each church until you're done church hopping. And, and they'll give me my goodie when they see me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Once they see you, someone will identify you as a visitor. Yeah. And you will be. So all in Nassau. All in your providence need to take Tuesday day off. Yes. And yes, come in Fox Hill. Yes. Go church hop into all the various Baptist church. Yes. Experience Fox Hill day, which starts at 12 noon until. Yes, right? Yes. And they can have a junk room rush out. And you list all the, all the A groups and the B groups. Are be, what time is the junk room rush out? The, the junk room rush out will start at 12, 12 midnight. Mm -hmm. 12 midnight, Tuesday going into Wednesday? No. no. It starts on Monday. Monday. See? Mm -hmm. I got to make sure. Well, right. And so, then, Monday night. Mm -hmm. You come to Fox Hill and experience the junk canoe rush out. Right. Right? Monday uh, morning. Monday morning. Say yes. Well, Monday night. Going to Tuesday? No, Sunday. it'll be Sunday, Sunday night. night. See, that's why I had to pause and slow down. <laughs> let's start off again. Okay, let's start. So Sunday, Sunday night. At midnight at 12, mm -hmm. midnight, will be junk canoe that will go into until. I don't want to put no Monday time. Monday morning. Morning, yes. Okay. Once you see 11 o'clock Monday morning, we're going to have an acromanical church service on the Fox Hill Parade and the Governor General will, will be our annual guest, invited mm -hmm. guest. Mm -hmm. All are invited to attend. And then at 1 p.m., we will have a, our annual seniors luncheon at the Fox Hill Community Center. Okay. Okay. So um, what, what time Roger and his uh, runners coming through? Because I was trying to get everything organized. I, I understand Sunday right. to Monday. Mm -hmm. And what time the runners come 
The runners are going to leave Gambia at 8 p.m. On, on which day? Sunday. So Sunday. So Sunday is a big event, event yeah. day. Yes. So 8 p.m., I should either be walking with you all or have my car bell to cheer you all on at night. Yes. Right? And you'll be running through to and reach for the junk canoe. Junk canoe. See, now I see how everything connected. So the whole idea is so that the runners can also participate in the junk canoe uh, parade. I like that, no. I like this. Yeah, just to keep the hype going. Yeah, yeah. And then we move on to Tuesday in the church services uh, and, and the church hopping. Yes. And my raccoon sauce. Yes. And my goodie bags. Yes. yes. And then at 12 noon on, Choos- on Tuesday, all activities, all activities start. And yes. that's when the, the, the bands the and the platinum of the maples and, and the, the boy who's be sliding off the greasy pole yes. to be there. Mr. Neri, it sounds like you want to do the, the greasy pole this year. Well, I, I plan to do something, but I like free things. So I plan to get the free things <laughs> part first. I, if I, you win, you get a free prize. Yes. I, I like free prize, so yes. I, I might have to do that. Yes. I so the entertainment will be um, Rashad Corley and the VIPs. Mm-hmm. They're going to be the host band for both days, okay. both Emancipation mm-hmm. and Fox Hill Day. Nice. Okay? And then Ebony 242. Will be the artist for Monday uh-huh. and Tuesday will be Nietzsche Ellis. Nice. And then for both days, we will have our very own from Fox Hill, mm-hmm. Action Jackson, the Limbo. The limbo dance. Yes, 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 yes. I know him. He's, Are you going to do low. Limbo? No, I ain't going to do no Limbo. <laughs> my, my body ain't made for that. That's what I want to give to you. Uh-huh. That you to come and do the Limbo. No, no, yeah. my body ain't made for that. Yeah, huh? we have it's, something for it's you. It's a big body. <laughs> we have something for you. Uh-huh. If you can do limbo and get low. Well, I like free things. I can try. <laughs> I have another, 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 another caller here. Let me patch that caller through. Okay. Go, go ahead, Bruce. Patch the caller through. Go ahead, caller. Can you hear me? Good morning. You kind of muffled, but go ahead. Good morning. Oh, you may have to call back on the next line. Call back quickly because you, you, the line is muffled. So call, hang up and call back quickly so I can ex, ex, include you in again. So I just want to repeat the Facebook page again, all the updates again one more time. Give me the Facebook page. Fox Hill Festival Committee. Okay. And uh, I see the caller calling. Um, just, try, just try to get this caller in quickly so I can let them speak. And so as you go, go ahead, caller. Can you hear me? Oh, God. We can't hear you at all, caller. I'm sorry. Okay. So the Sunday event, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday event. Sunday, we're having the road race. So if you're interested inside that, we take that at 8 o'clock from Gambia. We're going to run all the way back to Fox Hill. Of course, on Sunday at 12, midnight, when they get run the race, we're going to have junk canoe. We're going to have the beat. All the groups, shout out the groups for the junk canoe again. Shout out the groups for the junk canoe again. Okay, so the shout out for the groups again will be um, the Valley Boys, the Saxons, One Family Roots. And the Fox Hill Congos. Good. Okay. And then after the junk new, we can have all the bands and stuff like that. We move into Tuesday where we're going to have the church hopping again. So yes. the church hopping. Church hopping so band. The bands performing Rashad Colley, Nishi LS, the Still Walkers, the Limbo performance all in one. Yes. Anyway, this has been Guardian Radio in the AM. Of course, we had Warren Davis, who's the chairman of the Fox Hill uh, Festival Committee. Uh, happy Independence to everybody. Thank you very much to Mr. Williams. Thank you very much to Miss Gardner for joining me. And of course, I'm going to invite you back before, well, at least on Tuesday. Someone got to call in at least tell me what's happening. Right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. We yeah. also want to ensure the person that the police will be in full, of, in full effect that morning, that day. Yeah, strictly... Okay. Security strictly enforced by the Royal Bombers Police Force. Good. Guiding Radio AM, thank you very much, producer. Have a wonderful day.